VP. ZD, it's good to be back. Welcome back to the show, man. This is episode 29. We're almost 30. <laughs> We're almost 30, dude. Almost 30. You know, and I'm almost 40. I'm almost 40. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, right. I'm 39, yeah. You're 39. I'm 49. Yeah. 49. So we've got 29, 29, 39, 49. Right. This is a sacred geometry. <laughs> and uh, for people who don't know, we're two doctors uh, talking about the medical news that matters. It's a medical news show. It's a medical news Primarily show. Primarily news-based. <laughs> Primarily. That's right. Uh, so by the way, I found out like we're um, we're still like one of the top podcasts, even though we we haven't been putting out content because you've been traveling, I've been traveling. We barely do this show and it's still... Well, you know, it's a good show, I think. I listen to a lot of stuff. I hardly listen to myself ever, but I'll listen <laughs> yeah, to our okay. show back and I'll be like, dude, this is actually fun. I listened to our show back to realize that I wasn't really paying attention to what you were saying. I was thinking about the next thing I was gonna say. You know, uh, that's the standard human operating system, actually. Mm. You're, you're, we're hardly ever really listening. I, and you realize that, you know, like I just got back from another one of these annoying five-day silent meditation retreats. Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, wow, I'm actually listening to people. You're back and pre you're back present. I'm back present. Mm -hmm. Like I'm That's like, good. oh, you know, I, and, and a lot of it's nonverbal too. You start feeling what people are putting out rather than listening to the words they say. Cause a lot of times the words are just squawk, 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 squawk. You know, I, pr I pride myself on reading people well. And I think that uh, Zoom has crushed it because mm. pre-Zoom, you had all the advantages of seeing them face to face, the body language, the way they talk, what they might really be, you know, getting at or meaning. Um, but in the world of Zoom and virtual, it's very difficult. You know, and, and there's even, um, even beyond body language, there's a kind of a indescribable communication that happens between people in a physical space. Yeah. I think it could happen in a virtual space, theoretically. Look I just you. don't, I don't have Who proof are you, Zuck? Yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm, I'm trying to build this Zuckerverse and- uh, Metaverse. Sp speaking of which, it's really fascinating. Like uh, social media as we know it, I mean, it's time- maybe ticking away. Why, it's going broke. Yeah, they're gonna be Friendster, uh, you know, MySpace. <laughs> like, it's really looking interesting and I, I, I will not mourn its loss. I, I mean, won't. Every time know. I see him presenting his his vision, it's always it's always him putting on some headset and then, you know, taking up the shape of his avatar and then going to a meeting, you know? <laughs> Hell you want to do that I know. It's like, it's like you take the worst aspects of life, going yes. to meetings. <laughs> and combine it with the worst of tech. With the worst of tech, <laughs> VR, and, and make it the future of your company. <laughs> and I heard him on that Rogan podcast and he was like, he was like, and if somebody texts you in the middle of a meeting, you'll be able to look at the text without anyone know you're looking at it. I was like, oh, great. great. That's what I wanted. More people not present. Exactly. Yeah. More distraction. More distraction. You know, speaking of distraction, so Elon buying Twitter though. Oh, yeah. Ooh, isn't that interesting? And that wasn't on our list. You remember that. Ah. Yeah. Well, he's there, he's at the helm, but I got to admit, uh, if you look at the media coverage of it, the closest thing I feel as an analogy is uh, the media coverage of Trump. Mm. Because one, it's clear, they don't want him to succeed. Right, 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 right. <laughs> they, they want him to fail. Right. I mean, they don't like him. And I don't think, I think they don't like him because of course, he has previously stated that he thinks it doesn't have a fair treatment of political viewpoints. Right. And by that he means he thinks the conservative viewpoint needs to have a little bit less discrimination against it on social media platforms. Right. Um, and he, he's, he's spoken himself that he's more of a centrist, um, middle of the road kind of person. Right. And right. historically it always voted Democrat until this midterm election. Right. Um, but of course the media leans left. And so the media I think is upset with that. It's clear. It's I mean, clear. it's so obvious. There's, it's not It's not even that there's a, 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 even the attempt at objectivity. And yeah. they also, are obsessed with him because yeah. I look at my phone and it's like Twitter, Elon, every mm -hmm. single day. Mm -hmm. Another story. Because Trump's not around. Yeah. Because Trump's not <laughs> and around. And even when Trump's around, he's not doing so well. So, so they're, yeah, they're tired of him. Yeah. They're tired of him. He's got the, so Elon has got like that Trump media coverage. Right. All the time. They're talking about him all the time and they're always dogging him, you know, and that's what propelled Trump to start him. Yeah. I mean, he was already, already, you know, on his way as a celebrity, but they really propelled him to the White So you House. want Elon really to succeed, just keep doing what you're doing to try to stop him. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it probably is going to help him because it'll just, it's free advertising for Twitter. Right. But, um, you know, I mean, obviously he made that mistake of allowing anybody to pay $8 and get right. a blue check mark. Right. I thought it was actually a pretty decent idea, but it backfired in the sense that there was no way to prevent people from imitating, imitating Eli Lilly. accounts, right. Yeah, accounts. exactly. Z Dog MD. I mean, there were 30 people who were like, I'm <laughs> Z Dog MD. The real Z Dog doesn't have a blue check mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the real Z Dog. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm real, the real Z Dog. I'm Spartacus. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, it's interesting that. Um, that uh, it blew up a little bit in his face. Uh, but of course the media was, you know, egging it on. Yeah. Um, but we'll see what he does. I mean, he he laid off a lot of the workforce. 
you know, one thing I saw, they they had a news story about like the free meals. Apparently he oh, has yeah, ended this. the free meals at the, at the, at Twitter. Yep. And um, some people were lamenting it. And I'm like, come on, man. You make how much money? Yeah. Yeah. You live in San Francisco, but you know. No, there ain't nobody in America working, getting free meals. You yeah. know, it's like only this narrow corridor of like right. tech life where they're right. used to this indulgence. It's all because they're competing with each other for workers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Elon's point was that the attendance in person was so poor, it was the equivalent of $400, $400 per, meal, per, meal, yeah. per meal, Um, which I thought is probably, he's probably right. And you know what? If you're a company going bankrupt, you can't be giving free food out. Yeah. I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah. So I don't fault him for that. No one was showing up anyways, right? Like you said. So it's kind of like, yeah, I... I don't know. You know, it's funny. I I kind of like Elon a lot in this in this intuitive sense that he just kind of says shit, which I do appreciate. He's authentically him. He is. Which we'll probably hit on authenticity towards the end of the towards show. The yeah. Um, and you may not agree with everything he's doing, and sometimes he does things, and you're like, that's probably not a great idea. Um, but but I do think there's one tension. Yeah. Okay. And I was just saying this the other day, and I didn't tell you about this before. Mm. Look, I think there's two roles in life. You can be the CEO. Or you can be the uh, uh, the the news that you can be the uh, night show anchor. Mm. By that I mean, you know, who has a lot of freedom? The Dave Chappelle's of the world, the Bill Mars of the world. You know, they're a television personality. And to be honest, you and I have a lot of freedom. We have the freedom to say what we actually think. Right. But if you're corporate, if you're the CEO of a uh, major SEC, pharmaceutical firm, right? If you're if you're the president of Harvard. It's okay in my mind that the president of Harvard has a little more pressure on him not to just go say everything he thinks mm -hmm. because he does to some degree represent Harvard. And so I do think Elon puts himself in a strange role. Mm. On the one hand, I found it funny when he was dogging Senator Mar <laughs> Markle, um, Ed Merkel, um, about why do you have a mask in your profile picture, bro? <laughs> 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 on the other hand, when you're the CEO of Twitter, it's probably not a wise idea to take a crap on a sitting U.S. senator. Uh, you know, so there's the tension there, right? If it was a comedian doing it, it would be really funny. But if it is the CEO of a major company, I think it's difficult. You're conflicted on all those levels. Yeah. And what's interesting is that points right back to when he was on Rogan and he smoked weed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and, the, and the stock took a dip, right? The stock took a dip. So that's one thing. The second thing is NASA has these rules because he's in SpaceX. <laughs> that's right. That and you can't, you have to be drug tested or I forget what it was, but it, what he did was a no-no. And so that became a big thing. Really? So it's kind of like, boy, I would hate to be Elon actually and have my fingers in all those places where you can't be you. He does it anyways. Yes, I guess because his wealth is so tremendous. So tremendous that he can just power his way through. You know, but the marijuana thing, I mean, NASA needs to pull a stick out from their yeah, ass. You right. know, obviously, come on. This, come these on, federal dude. marijuana rules are ridiculous anyway. Um, I mean- And Biden thankfully has released all those- Yeah, all those, uh, all those uh, marijuana convictions. Yeah, I, yeah, I think people are starting to grow up about these things, you know, there's a, the, it's actually a more libertarian approach on of course. drug policy, which I which, think is great. Which uh, always makes sense to It always me makes sense, for yeah. For 20 years, but yeah. back to Elon. Okay, yeah. Every there's in this town, there's so many billionaires and their big houses around here. Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, okay. Um, there's so many in this town, in this area. I think he might be one of the few ones who made his fortune by actually building something you can touch. Like you can yeah. really yeah. hold. Yeah. So as much as people criticize him, I think you gotta give him mad props he didn't make his fortune by stealing the attention of 13 year olds. Yeah. You know, he didn't make his fortune by making some bullshit, you know, app or, you know, something like that. Some digital cloud, bay, bubble, you know, all these things. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck they mean. Digital health app. Yeah, yeah. right. Whatever that Which means. Which we're going to talk Which about. Which we're going to talk about your <laughs> yeah, ridiculous yeah. digital health app. Uh, <laughs> he made his fortune by building a car. And you know what? People can say whatever they want. I saw people saying like, oh, I'm never going to drive a Tesla. Blah, blah, blah. Have you been in a Tesla? It's a, it's much better than a regular car. Yeah. I mean, the acceleration is tremendous. The way the seats are awesome. The visual display is great. I mean, it's a great, it's a great ride. And I say that as somebody who's not really that big a fan of electric. I mean, right. you know, I like a good gas guzzling car. I don't have yeah. a problem with it. But yeah. Um, you know, it's a really, it's a really great product. Um, and I drove one and somebody, somebody I know had owned one and he was like, it was a plaid edition. And he said, oh, those are this? fast. No, oh my God. Oh, this guy was like, just, he's like, just, just, just floor it, just floor it and see what happens. Dude, you will lose your I, appendix. Oh, yeah. oh my God. I <laughs> yeah. was like, this is like, it was like faster than an airplane taking off. Oh, I mean, it was like a rocket ship and I was like, oh my God. And it just doesn't stop accelerating at that pace. It accelerates like that to 130 miles an hour. Wow. So it's just nothing but acceleration, 1.3 Gs. Uh, wow. It was unbelievable. And I was like, this is crazy. Um, so anyway, so he made a real product. He obviously has, you know, some skills and some talents. Um, and people are like, oh, he's working people around the clock. And you know, I mean, 
he's under a lot of pressure. He has a billion dollars in debt payments he's got to make every year. And maybe it's okay sometimes that you work a little bit hard if you're really trying to do something great in this world. Yeah, the the, the complaint that he's working people hard uh, feels insane to me. That's what you do. Well, when that's you're, what we did. Yeah, that's what we did. And yeah. when it was when you're building something that you care about. If you don't care about it and you're quiet quitting and you're sitting there at Twitter, then get the fuck out. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I we, we both swore already. Yeah, but I got okay. a couple emails saying the the only reason that I'm concerned about your swearing is that I listen with my kids in the car because it's my chance to listen because I'm shuttling my kids around. That's and then they, they, they yell at me for being a hypocrite. And so I'm going to tell the kids right now that are listening, mommy and daddy aren't a hypocrite. It's just Vinay and Uncle Z are <laughs> bad, bad men. <laughs> so natural. Um, okay, you're right. We, we got to clean it up for these people. A little bit, a little bit, not little too bit, much. Not too otherwise much. it's inauthentic. Okay, yeah. But I was going to say, you know, about, yeah. about this net worth thing, yes. you're saying everyone's worth a billion. So I made the mistake of opening Twitter the other day just to see what, what Elon's Twitter looks like. And uh, someone had tagged me in something and was complaining about me saying they used to be a supporter of mine until they found out what did they find that out? my net worth yeah, what is, is it? $30 million. Is dollars. that true? <laughs> I find uh, do, that hard to believe. Do, do I look, okay. <laughs> no, you don't you look You find like, it hard to believe because I'm, it's insane. You don't look so like you're worth million I was like, dollars. where did they come up with this? So I Google ZDog MD yeah. net worth. And there's some site that's like, uh, ZDog MD, AKA Dr. Zubin Nemanja's net worth is $30 million. And I'm like, you know, I don't even know what my actual net worth is. I know it's vastly less than that, yeah. but how could they know? And then you start to wonder, Ooh, how do you know the net worth of anybody? Oh, that's a good question. Right? Well, I don't have the full answer, but I looked into it a little bit. Ah. Okay. So my understanding is for like Forbes 500 and these sorts of things, right. that um, people whose primary assets are stock ownership, mm. their net worth is more estimatable. It's right. right. Because you can say there's this many shares and it's worth this much. Yeah. So Elon, Jeff Bezos, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg, yeah. Okay. And Gates, mm -hmm. people like that. Mm -hmm. But we are talking about People whose families have had wealth for a thousand years, European families, oh, you you're talking know. about the Netherlands, you're talking about England, you're talking about Spain, you're talking about Italy, you have no idea yeah. the net worth. Yeah. And you know, Panama Papers was a glimpse into it, um, but we still have no idea of the fortunes. So people whose wealth comes from long ago or comes from nations that you know uh, aren't very report, you know, don't track these things well, or whose net, whose wealth comes from things besides stock, uh, very hard to estimate. Mm. And so. You know, for you, I think you're probably unestimatable. Unestimatable, yeah. And that's not doesn't mean you have a big number. <laughs> yeah, too. By unestimatable, I mean, I mean, if there's an asymptote of zero, I might approach it eventually. But yeah, no, I mean, it, it is interesting because uh, that creates a kind of reactance in the audience too. It's like, especially if they're supporting you, like they're doing a supporter thing, they're paying five bucks a month to be part sure. of the thing. They're like, well, why am I giving this 30 million, 30X millionaire money? And it's like, well, because I'm not a... 30X millionaire and also because it's not just about giving me money, it's about supporting something you care about. That's what I, so that's what I, I mean. Content like, you care about that isn't social media ad driven. That's why care. I subscribe to things that I subscribe to. Right, me too. It's because like I, you have to, if you don't support the things you like, they're gonna go away. They're gonna go away. Yeah. yeah. And then what are you left with? You're left with all those- Trash. Trash programs that you are not watching or listening to. Right. And I always find it astonishing that, um, you know, sometimes I check myself. I notice that I've listened to a ton of podcasts from this one group or one person over the last six months. And I'm like, I gotta give something give to them some money, yeah. because otherwise they're gonna go away. Yeah. There ain't nobody listens to boring podcasts except no, but I got, in, <laughs> you know, I got into it. Um, that's a good point. But, yeah. you know, I think that um, when people disagree with you, they're quick to rationalize reasons, including fabricating reasons. Right. I've read many things fabricated about us throughout the pandemic. Oh, there's quite a few. That I saw it doesn't work in clinic. I was like, well, I'm there every week. Uh, you know, <laughs> it doesn't attend on service, doesn't do this, doesn't do that. Not a real epidemiologist. Well, he happens to be in the Department of Epidemiology and a professor of epidemiology. Oh, but not a real one, you know? And, and all they're really just saying is, I don't, I don't agree. I don't agree. You know? Which how about then let's argue civilly about what you don't agree about. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, and I think that that's challenging for many people because, you know, I saw somebody say that like, you know, oh, this was this is another knock, which was like, um, you you act like you know everything about about vaccines and masking. I was like, no, I I spent a great deal of time reading the literature, which is more than I'm sure you've done because you know. Okay. By what, how you're talking. By how you're talking, <laughs> you know? And then I'm like, and having read it, I feel very confident in the things I'm saying. And so if you want somebody to not speak confidently, then you're gonna have to go look elsewhere because when I talk, I'm gonna speak confidently. And when I'm not talking, the things I'm not talking about are the things I don't know anything about. That's why I'm not talking about those things. Yeah.
Yeah. Actually, that's a good segue into the misinformation police piece you wrote on oh, Sensible Medicine, okay. man. Because I read that. It shows up. See, this is how I know that you've written You read it, it in the original English or the German translation? I, I read it in the <laughs> Latin, which I translated. Uh, Big Latin. Yeah, it was translated into German. Yeah, that was crazy. So we wrote a Sensible Medicine piece. And the next thing I know, I see somebody forwarded me. It's been translated into German. It's that good. Because see, it's das gut. German, German is like the, it's like high elvish. Like if you get <laughs> translated into that, like you're, you've, you've reached the apex. I mean, and just think about that person out there in Germany who is in Germany, fluent in German, but doesn't know any English. Right. And that's the audience I'm getting to. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Gun, yeah, Gunter, Gunter. On, on the on the banks of the Rhine, he's sitting there <laughs> sipping his Gewurztraminer, and he's like, "Yeah, he's like, he's like, if only, if only this, this is in, in the, the mother tongue." <laughs> <laughs> ich habe keine Zeit to translate this. If only. Oh, oh. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> das das medicine sensibly sensible. Um, I, I hear I hear that little Italian in that. I'm not sure that's. Uh, I, my, I don't speak any German. My, so. I don't speak a word of it. My accents are terrible. Um, as my children will tell you, my, mm -hmm. my kids have amazing accents. They are on all, point. All, no, everything, everything, anything you throw at them, if they watch it enough on YouTube, they can come back and do it. Yeah, perfectly. Well, we didn't have YouTube growing exactly. up. Okay, okay. I had to pretend that Count Chocula was German. <laughs> We had we had the we had the card catalog Z. If oh. you wanted to learn a fact, we had the card catalog. Dewey Decimal for life, dude. You're just like f f f f flipping through that. You had your like favorites. Two forty two point two forty two point two is the science fiction aisle. <laughs> <laughs> you had your favorites. Yeah. Wait, so what were we talking so about? So we were talking about um, oh, sensible medicine. Oh, sensible yes. medicine. Yeah, misinformation, okay. please. So you know what was the thesis of the article? The thesis is that uh, we've always had an arena in science where people debate. You know. You think this, I think this, we think this. You know, we, all, we can argue all the time. That's fine. And I have no problem with anybody with any qualifications wanting to debate any issue in science. You think this, you think that. That's fine. You're free to speak, in my opinion. What's unique is that there is a movement that it's not just about I'm going to try to make my case better. I'm going to make my video channel. I'm going to make my TikTok videos. I'm going to do my tweeting. They want to say Z Dog has to be dethrottled. Yes. You know, it's not just that I will do a better job of what I'm communicating. You have to be penalized. We have to either stop your content, dethrottle it, ghost ban you, these kinds of, you know, uh, algorithmic measures. So that to me is my core, it's my first thesis point. Which so is life that, is a battle between good and evil. That's the, that's the core delusion there. That's a delusion. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, I mean, I can imagine you had that delusion and you still wanted to fight fire with fire and argue. Right. This is really, you want to suppress your opponent's that's speech. Right. And that's unique. Right. I mean, and that, that's different than you want to make your speech heard more. Right. Because I want to make, I don't want to suppress my opponent's speech. I have no interest in my opponents in any way, shape, or form. Right. I want my speech to overwhelm the system so that right. I win the battle of ideas. Right. And if they keep talking, let them talk. What do I care? Yeah. I don't want to stop them from talking. Let them talk to their no, no follow <laughs> <laughs> and their boring shows. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> your boring tweets and your boring, oh, why doesn't anyone follow me? Boring because you're people. boring, boring. Most, okay. The most boring people in the world, dude. <laughs> yeah, but I want everyone to keep talking so people know how boring you are, you know? Okay. But so like, that's not my game, but they like that. So that's their tactic. Right. And the moment you employ that talk, tactic, I think you're, you start to enter into dangerous war waters. And that's what this gets into. Mm. The people who imply that tactic, I call them the misinformation police. And I say, this as the essay title is, they struck out because they got so many things wrong. And I try to articulate like, what, who are they? What is about them and why they got these things wrong? So some things about them. One, they uh, all have the exact same politics. They all had the Ukrainian flag in the bio. Yep. They all had the mask selfie in the profile yep. photo. They Hashtag all, BLM. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they are Democrats. Yep. By the way, I am too. But okay, they're yep. Democrats. But they're they're far left Democrats. Yeah, they're all far left Democrats. They yeah. don't have a Republican in there in the mix. Okay, there's not a single one. <laughs> now, right. now let that but, settle yeah, in. Let that settle, let in. That settle so, in. So they're the science police, right? But they're also 100 far left Democrats. That's right. There's not even like a Clinton Democrat in there. Correct. No, a moderate <laughs> centrist <laughs> Democrat. No, there no, isn't no, no, no. one. No, it's all far left, and and they're particularly far left on uh, social issues. Right. Uh, on economic issues, I think there are some corporatists in there. Like yeah, the, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. But on social issues, it's like, hey, let's trans everybody right now. Yeah, they're right. they're they're very much into the you know the far left on all those on all the 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 docket of far left right. social issues. Okay. Which, by the way, reflects the academy. 
Wait, right, that's yeah. true. Yeah. And so that's why they're overrepresented in the academy. Right, right. Well, I, actually, I'm not sure about these these influencers because I think many of them are not in the academy. Are not in the right. academy. Okay. Right. Good point. I mean, maybe a few might be right. inadvertently, but not you know the most vocal. Okay. Right. But I think first thing you have to say is how can it be possible that all the people who are policing science are also all committed to all the democratic causes? I think that's worth it. So it okay. starts to, it starts to build a tribal identity of who these people are. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing is they all favor these novel tactics of cutting your opponent's legs that's rather right. than standing higher. Right. You know, that sort right, of thing. Right, right, right. Um, and then the other things I talk about in the essay is that in the pre-COVID times, I think it was easy for them to build science influencer status by talking about, I don't know, something in the news about, you know, does green tea fight cancer? Do right. blueberries do this? Alkaline or does, water. Does right. alkaline water Look, work? I, I was in that group pre-COVID. I mean, I and would rub. do a piece on alkaline water. And, and and there's still a role for that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with right, that right. because of course alkaline water is horse shit. And, yeah. and drinking water from a ditch in Oregon because it's, what is a raw, oh, yeah. raw water? Raw water is, yeah. is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and you know, you know, and I mean- But, but again, it's like dunking on a, a like six foot hoop. That's what like, I <laughs> made fun of them yeah. once for saying that. Right. Um, you know, and like, okay, so that, but I mean, to some degree it's necessary. People are doing this stupid they are, yeah, stuff. They are. Swallowing fistfuls of vitamins and minerals right. that you adequately get when you eat a balanced diet or- um, Bleach enemas or whatever right, they're doing for putting autism. Things, yeah. Putting things in in places that you think will, you know, putting things, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, into your body yes. uh, uh, that will heal you. <laughs> yeah, cleanse you. Cleanse you. Cleanse you. Jade eggs in your vagina or something in your ass or, you know- T- I mean, Toxic shock syndrome never killed anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Except when it has, <laughs> and and then how about um, twisting and turning vertebral bodies? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, cracking yeah. and breaking things in the neck to relieve tensions and things like that. <sighs> you know, and then um, I don't know, lighting a candle on your back and putting a cup over it to create a sucking sensation or <laughs> or pricking your skin with little needles. And okay, sure, those things. I think you know what's the strongest case against most of these things is that if you really took those things. And you randomize people to that or sham controlled, the effect sizes go to as close to zero as you could expect. Right. Okay. So, I mean, that's the biggest, that's the most damning case. In many cases, no one has ever done those studies because the probability those work is so low. Right. And and in some cases, they lack any mechanistic rationale. And and one of the arguments that people will make, the sort of misinformation police in particular, is that, well, by by in any way legitimizing these practices, you're legitimizing magical thinking, anti-scientific thinking, and that's a slippery slope. That's my favorite argument, the slippery slope to the decline of Western civilization and the end of the Enlightenment. Well, and they say that, but then the irony is that they have engaged in magical thinking. Okay, so this is their mantra beforehand. Um, and I think even 10 years ago, they weren't all far left Democrats. I no, think they there, weren't. There were probably some people on the right too yeah, who, were in, who were in this ballpark. That's right. They've moved into being far left, this ballpark, all the social political issues. Um, and now they've taken different things on their plate. Um, who should wear a mask and when? What should be community mask policy? How? What should be a guidance around testing and quarantining? How often should kids test in school? Um, how many doses of vaccine do people need? How does it vary by age, sex, and prior infection status? And these issues, they frankly just couldn't handle. They, they can't handle it. Can't if handle you look it. at how they talk, it's almost like, well, I'm just gonna repeat the party line of the, this lefty tribe that I've formed and anything else. And I can, I can, you know, you can find data to support any crazy thing right. as they will point out for anti-vaxxers. Correct. Oh, but, but that you can find data to support anything. And it's like, well, okay, but then let's see your thinking on this. And when you look into it, it's that's why I loved your piece. Cause like, yeah, they're absolutely unscientific. Absolutely unscientific. Yeah. And so they had like, made a case against tribalism and uh, irrationality. And then they- They go after Mandrola. (laughs) Yeah, and they go after Mandrola. And then they subscribe to tribalism and irrationality. Mm -hmm. And so in my piece, I had a few examples. One was, um, you know, an immunologist. I don't even, you know, and somebody was like, somebody sent me like, oh, this immunologist has published a few papers. I'm like, okay, great. Yeah, like lots of people publish a few papers. But the question is on the topic, this person is wrong. This person was like, uh, there's no such thing as immune debt. The fact that we severely disrupted society for a few years and people went a few seasons without flu and RSV does not mean they will be, you know- Catching up. Catching up in the future. Um, And, you know, Alistair Monroe, pediatrician researcher from the United Kingdom, has a whole thread on, you've debunked immune debt. Uh, You could have done a PubMed search before. Because immune debt is a thing. Is a thing. There's multiple (laughs) peer-reviewed articles. He's articulating the concept, you know- um, and what is this really about? And we're seeing it emerge. And we're seeing it yeah, emerge. I so, mean, there's RSV, yeah. you know, right. crowding everywhere. Hospital. Yeah, flu. Yes. I mean, what are we really arguing about? I think we're really arguing about is like, should we have lockdown? 
Right. Right. And so the reason they're saying there's no immune death is because they, it can't have done it can't have done anything bad. That's Lockdown right. school closure. That's it right. couldn't have done anything bad. It That's has to be right. perfectly good, perfectly good. Everything is wonderful. Everything is wonderful. Nothing to see here. But you know what? It it does have downsides. Okay. How yeah. stupid are you? Of course, it has downsides. Everything and this is one has of them. A cost. Everything, Everything has, a cost. has a cost. And this is the cost. Obviously, this would be the cost. Dude. And 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 so, but these guys now because and this is the thing. I used to identify with this group of debunkers ten early years on. ago. Ten years were, ago. Well, it's not the same group. It's not the same group. When all it, the planks on a ship change, is it the same boat? Is it the same boat? That's a great old school philosophical question. Mm-hmm. It's not the same group. And what I have noticed is when you get attacked, when I get attacked, say on Twitter, which is fine, I have no problem with people coming at us for whatever. But it's it's almost like it's almost comical how you can predict what's gonna be in their Twitter description. Like you just know. Like a $30 million net worth Z dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 30 mails. Yeah, hashtag $30 million loser Z dog. It, you know, it's gonna be it's a like Ukrainian a- flag, a mask emoji, uh, all lives matter. No, but black, oh my gosh, black lives matter. Uh, it's gonna be, um, uh, there's a few other things like he he lost, you lost dummy. Like, you know. What does that mean? Uh, that's a Trump uh, bash thing. Oh, yeah, so it's just God. saying, okay, God, I'm, I'm signaling. <laughs> who, who I'm in, what tribe I'm in. And you can just, you can predict it like clockwork almost. Yeah. Um, and that shouldn't be possible. That shouldn't be possible. shouldn't be possible. It's from first, first principles that, and they'll say, well, no, it's just because all smart people are leftists. And yeah. I'm like, well, uh, uh, I haven't seen that play out in the world either. So. Yeah. And you know, that's, I think, I think that's also a, a very cruel thing to, like a very incorrect thing to say, which is that if you really lived your life where, and, you know, I have my principles are, you know, I am more in line with the Democratic Party. I am, you know, I'm uh, and on a lot of issues. I am actually far left on uh, on, on uh, regulatory issues. And I've written two books that are pretty much far left. And, the, you know, on think, regulation. Yeah, on regulation. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, once upon a time, uh, the closest my closest allies are like Ro Khanna and Bernie Sanders on those kinds of issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the same time, I have to acknowledge there are many conservative writers who are brilliant, who I yeah. disagree with. Yeah. You listen to the the legal uh, the legal. um Scholar Paul D. Clement arguing the Supreme Court, probably one of the best oral argument people. He's a conservative. He disagrees yeah. with you. You have to give people props for being smart and clever, yeah. even if you disagree with them. Yeah. And some, and then you have to have the humility to know that maybe you're not right about everything in politics. That's the other thing. Maybe you're not right. People cannot, uh, they don't seem to come from a place of, could I be wrong and what would that look like and what would it feel like if I were shown to be wrong on this issue? Whatever it is. I think like- the proof that most of these pundits don't know anything is like, look how wrong they couldn't even tell. They, they were all wrong about the election results. Yeah. In the midterm. Yeah. They, you know, yep. and now they're back on TV saying reasons for why, why it happened they, the way it did. Exactly. I'm like, you're the same moron who predicted a 20 point swing two weeks ago. God, it's just, you just talk. You have no data. I mean, uh, you and I were thinking like early on that, oh, this is going to be a sweep for Republicans because of how they managed COVID. Yes. Yeah. And I guess uh, COVID kind of felt like it went away prior to the midterms and then yeah. abortion. Yes. It was a big deal. And then it turns, it turns like Trump has left a bad taste in people's mouths. So it's well, all yeah. these things. And I, you know, I got to, and, uh, and, and, and running crazy candidates doesn't help you. Running crazy <laughs> candidates, like who was running for governor of Pennsylvania or something. And oh, he, yeah, yeah Mastrano, man. Yeah. And, oh, oh, dude, yeah. dude, wait a minute. Holy crap. How did we not talk about this off the top of the hour? Dr. Oz didn't win. Oh yeah, he lost. You and I did a show months Fetterman. ago. Fetterman. Yeah, Fetterman. Like a You've guy, always hated Dr. Oz. I, mean, I, I well, he's well, he is trash. I mean, in the sense yeah, that his yeah, I, views what, on I, what I hate is what he what he conveys that he stands for, which is absolute opportunism, power, money, ambition, and a total and disre- crudita. Crudita. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what cost him, I suspect. I, I think it was that and the fact that like I think Pennsylvanians are just not you know, he he's not a blue collar guy. He doesn't even live in Pennsylvania. No, he's a carpetbagger. He's, a carpet he's like bagger. from New Jersey. And uh, he's no more Pennsylvanian than I am. And and what was nice to see is that the voters, they were actually willing to take a candidate who just didn't really look that good. I Fetterman didn't look over. That good. I mean, that you know, that's a mess too, in the sense that I'm not talking about a stroke and all that. It's just like, dude, the guy like lives with his parents, has a goatee, wears a hoodie, and you know, but you know, to... I think that was his appeal. Oh, I in think... Pennsylvania, sure. Yeah. And like, I don't know, and even when I Heck, watched... that would fly in Cali. Even when I watched his debate, I thought that um, the one line he kept repeating is like, I'm running for like everyone who's been knocked down wants to get back Dude, up and again. that's compelling. It's compelling, especially when a guy just had a stroke and he's yeah. trying to get back up again. And he's doing his thing. And, and he's like, how tall? He's like six, seven. He's huge. He's huge, yeah. He's the tallest guy always wins. <laughs> I think, isn't there some data on that? Yeah, there's some data there's on some that data for on presidential that. anyways. Yeah, uh, height. Yeah, height. And you know, and Oz is just, he comes off as inauthentic. So, and we're going to talk about authenticity, but that, yeah. that, you know, that's what bothers me about Oz. 
he he oh, feels awesome. so inauthentic to any set of belief beyond I only believe in getting more power, influence, fame, whatever it is. That's what it feels like. Hey, he may be a wonderful human being. I don't know him personally. Mm. I've talked to people who work with him and I'm unimpressed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I think the reason why so many in the medical community were rubbed the wrong way by him is that he promoted a lot of yeah, garbage. Oh, stuff. that foolish stuff that we were debunk that people were debunking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ago. Get back to the misinformation. The misinformation. Yeah, thing. I mean, yeah. he was on the wrong side of a lot of those issues. Yeah, for for um, real. But I guess the point of my essay was really that, like, you know, how many vaccines a twenty year old needs? That's different yeah. than debunking cupping or right. jade egg reiki. Reiki. Yeah. It's a different thing. Yeah. And you know, to be an influencer. It's obviously natural why you'd want to talk about that because that's like the thing that people care about. And it's natural to think that the CDC's position is in fact the gospel, right? but it is not settled science and it was really live and the debate needed to be had and the influencers really got on the wrong side of a lot of things. Yeah. Um, and they're still on the wrong side of a lot of things. And there's some of them are still, you know, talking nonsense. The other example I had in the in the piece was somebody who was an influencer who was like arguing about vaccine safety. And uh, it was a great tweet. Somebody captured it and he's like, you know, previously you said vaccine induced thrombocytopenia and thrombosis. Vit wasn't, does, wasn't a thing. Wasn't real. I noticed you've deleted your tweet there. Oh, I, know, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, this is the people deleting their tweets. And like, I was like, you don't know what you're talking about, dude. Just admit you don't know. You know, you don't have to stay. You don't have to get into the vit debate. Vit is a technical topic. This is why Twitter is such a... Um interesting space because it allows you to express what your emotion body is already feeling. So something happens, there's cognitive dissonance. You're like, wait, VIT can't be a thing due to vaccines because I'm a big fan of vaccines Correct. because I'm also quite liberal and Trump is not a fan of the vaccine. Correct. Therefore, I'm going to write something right now. Well, this is not even a thing. Uh, and you never had the moment to self-reflect and go, oh, could I be missing something that's a rare side effect of vaccines that's still consistent with me thinking vaccines are a good idea, but that I could then do some good in the world and say, yeah, this may be a thing in this population. Maybe we should think about that population getting a different vaccine. Correct, which but, is what we were saying. But they yes. don't do that. No, I mean, I guess I hate to say it, but like you can literally reduce many of these COVID debates, like from this immune debt to this vid to just the following, Trump bad, I hate Trump. Yeah. Trump say, opposite true. There you go. <laughs> you know, Trump don't like mask, I like mask. More mask, the better. Younger, the better. Longer, the better. Keep it doing it. Yep. Trump don't want vaccine. And to be honest, that's the one strange thing because he actually kind of did want the vaccine. Well, when he was in yeah, office, right, they right. were all anti, you know. Right, right, that right. was the, one of the themes of my essay that I published on uh, on SSRN. It's, you know, a peer reviewed article was right. that when Trump was in office, they were all dogging the vaccine. The moment he's out, it's all vaccine, vaccine. I, I remember this quite well. And then the other thing is like, you know, I would suspect, I don't know this to be true, that probably, you know, anti-vax does have a foothold in like liberal communities in California. Historically, yeah. Historically. That's but, all flipped. But yeah, now yeah. it dominates in the right. Now Marin is like the most vaccinated place on earth. Which and I would have, yeah, One vax for every mask. <laughs> one mask, one vax, one mask, one vax. <laughs> and, uh, and the right is the one that's the more anti-vax. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so now like, why are they so bullish on like vaccine mandated mask? It, you know, it's just enough. I view so much of this as just trying to punish your political opponents. All political. It's all political. And 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 you know, let's not let the right off the hook. I mean, so they're they're quick to jump on any conspiracy about the vaccines. They're quick to jump on. Well, they like um, uh, supplements and minerals. Yeah, right. Yeah, like <laughs> ivermectin or whatever. I, yeah. yeah. And it was, it's always like a mixture of like a yeah. little ivermectin, a little bit a a a zithromax, uh, a zithromax, <laughs> yeah, a, a, a little bit of this, vitamin, a touch of zinc. You gotta have zinc. Right. Gotta have zinc. Right. It's all got to be like off patent stuff because they don't want to be inconsistent with their hatred of pharma, which is new because they're actually conservatives and they used to love pharma. They used to love pharma, and, and, but uh, now they hate big pharma. You, oh, by the way, funny story. So remember America's frontline doctors? Do you remember this group? Uh, so, like eight people who went to that capital steps? That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So they, they, one of them was the, the woman um, from Texas, doctor from Texas who thought that like, you know, w w bad dreams were like witch semen or something. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Semen. yeah. And she was deplatformed from- Deplatformed for her witch semen belief. Yeah, was that why? No, no, no. I think it was just because she was promoting hydroxychloroquine and crazy talk about vaccines. Well, you know, that's another thing, which yeah. is that as much as I dislike the woman who thinks witch semen is a problem and, <laughs> and hydroxychloroquine works because I don't think it works. Like, I don't know if deplatforming these people is no, your no, no. best. No, no, no. It okay, doesn't okay, do any okay, good. Yeah, okay. So so the, the leader of this little group. Yes, yes. So what they started doing is they started a telehealth thing, America's Frontline Doctors, and they were prescribing like ivermectin and doing all this stuff for large fees. So it turns out they that group just imploded. There was just an article written uh, in Axios, so who knows, you know. But it was about Simone Gold, who's an ER doc from LA, who was one of the big advocates, like don't get vaccinated, like snort ivermectin, America's frontline docs, very conservative. She was she was actually arrested 
for and convicted for her role in the January 6th. Oh yeah, she went to the <laughs> She went to God. jail. But she comes out and it turns out she was potentially in the group collapsed because she was embezzling the money that they were making and bought herself a $3.6 million house. Oh, really? <laughs> this is all alleged. Alleged. This yeah. is a news show, Vinay. Okay, I see. We have to use the word alleged. Alleged, yeah. Um, but dude, I mean, surprise. So on the right, they're batshit crazy. On the left, they're batshit crazy. Why they're all politicized, they can't see clearly. Yeah. And social media has kind of made it worse. You're right. So that's what I think. And you're right. And and, and uh, it spills over into COVID. Yep. And if you're really so political, you're not a scientist, in my opinion. Yeah. So that brings me to the New England Journal article. Yes. The New England Journal has, um, you know, the, the definitive S, the article that proves masking kids works. Tell me about this. And I know nothing about it. I've been off the grid. Uh, there's like 70 school districts in Massachusetts and they have like week by week um, uh, uh, case rates in kids and and, uh, and adults in the schools. And then they divide schools into like three groups. There was like two schools that never stopped mask mandates. They happened to be urban, inner city, predominantly Hispanic and black schools. Mm. And then there were all the white kids in the suburbs who got to take the mask off at different time points. Um, and I, and, um, and this followed like what happened after they removed the masks versus keeping the masks. It used a difference in difference design, which, uh, you know, which, which is a certain statistical thing that tries to hold constant the fact that there may be some differences between these schools. But if those differences, those confounders are in fact constant, difference in difference will adjust for that. The only thing difference in difference cannot adjust for is a time varying confounder that changes over the course of the study. Right. But when you put a mask on and take a mask off, it is almost inevitable that you're doing other things differently yeah. over time. Yeah. And that would be a time varying confounder. Anyway, this is a New England Journal paper. There's some other problems with it. They removed the masks and then like the big spike was many, many months later and they're attributing that to a decision made like many, many months before and people say it's because of like exponential spread, but that doesn't quite make sense. Uh, th there are a lot of structural problems. For people very interested in the technical issues of this paper, they should read Tracy Beth Hogg's Sensible Medicine post about you know why she was upset that it was published. It was about this week. Um, but there's a number of issues from – you know, how are they counting? You know, are, are we testing people the same way? What about vaccination? What about prior immunity? What does that mean for case counts? Um, and the fact that ultimately the sample size is just these two random schools were the ones that really didn't remove mask mandates. Um, okay, the authors are technically proficient at difference and difference analysis. So they're doing a lot of things to try to bolster their case. But ultimately we're left with, this is an observational study. Right. Even when it's done perfectly, it has very poor agreement with randomized control trials. Um, FDA tried to validate observational studies and randomized trials this year. They gave the Harvard group, a different Harvard group, a lot of money to do it, and they were unable to get the two to agree. Yeah. You know, so in other words, the gold standard randomized control trial does not agree with observational trials in most cases. In most cases, even yeah. when those observational studies are done by really well expertise. Right. Really well done. Yeah. And so until you clear that hurdle, we should always take observational studies with a grain of salt, even right. if they purport to be causal as this is. Right. But here's what gets me about it. All of the authors on this paper and the editorialist have previously said, hashtag mask those kids, the whole pandemic. Oh, so they're all like in the tribe of- the One of the authors of the paper had started a change.org petition to mask kids. So so how can you possibly trust any <laughs> science, say, especially an like observational it. trial done by people who have already made the conclusion? Yes, I they, know. Not only have they made the conclusion, they've publicly stated and put their reputation on that They have conclusion. a petition. <laughs> they have a petition. They're on Twitter. This is f effing crazy. It's so crazy. I don't know what to say. I'm like, are we are we playing games here? Like, we all understand that there is analytic flexibility. But if you looked at the data and I looked at the data and we sliced and diced it, we get to pick which state we're going to look at, which time period we're going to look at, what year we're going to look at, masking rules. There's also disputes about like, did these districts actually stop masking when you say they masked? Did mm. they actually stop masking before? These things are all being like, there's so much flexibility here. And the people doing the analysis have been vocal adhere, vocal proponents that they think this is good and we ought to do this. You really trust this? This makes no sense at all. And listen, I think both you and I could say it's fully possible that masking kids could work. Possible. Right? It's fully possible. Well, but I have some reasons why. Okay, go You on. have a reason why it may okay, not Okay, no, no, no. Well, but think, but okay. we're saying if, this, if we had a random, a good cluster, cluster randomized yes, trial. That's what I've always said. Yeah, that showed a real difference. I would believe it. I'd believe it. And I would say, you know what? These things work for the next pandemic. We should mask kids. And you know what would happen if you did a cluster randomized trial? The two places that were asked to mask would probably not be the two schools in the inner city with black and Hispanic students. Yeah, and in fact, the authors in their discussion, you know, they have a whole section on how this masks will heal structural racism. Oh Lord. They're playing that card. 
Okay, so this is just- And you know why they're playing that card? Let's be honest, it, it goes back to that misinformation. Yeah. Because they know all the people who have the, the BLM Ukraine flag- Anti-racism. Anti-racism, you know, that group of people who is the misinformation police, now we play the masking is also structural racism. It's 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 this Venn diagram. This is crazy. It's it's like a cult. <laughs> they're, they're creating they're creating this um, tribe within medicine yeah. that will be the arbiter of truth using low level methodology, yeah. incredibly inconclusive, yeah. and using brute force power as a platform to extinguish ideas they disagree with. Very dangerous. And, and you know what I think is interesting too, and this is just an intuition. I don't know if I have data on this. This is a tiny sliver of the population oh, so that tiny. feels this way, so but they tiny. have such a voice in the culture. So on yeah, social so media, in academics. And that's the difference between Simone Gold and the crazies on the right and then the crazy here. Ah, tell me about this. The difference is the Simone Gold, I don't see, she's not a university professor, is she? No, she's just a child. She's not publishing in New England Journal of Medicine, is Correct. she? Correct. Right, this is New England Journal of Medicine. Yeah. And New England Journal of Medicine and nature and science, they have to stand for science. They can't, you know, the science yeah. editor had that whole essay about Joe Ladapo. Yeah, bad. right, same thing. Jesus Same Christ. Same cult behavior. I mean, you can't, science can't just say science for Democrats. Yeah, like, right. I mean, I'm a Democrat too, but I mean, <laughs> it can't just say, no, Republicans not welcome. If a Republican came up with like some particle physics thing, nope. <laughs> yeah, forget it. Forget it. You know, they found the Higgs boson, but the guy voted for Trump. Voter, he's a Trump supporter? Oh, come on. Nah, there's he's no out. such thing as a Higgs boson. No, it's we gotta We gotta change the standard model to fit <laughs> yeah. this new belief. You know, that sounds interesting, doesn't it? It sounds and then, and like then, a- And then if a Democrat came up with the Higgs boson, the discussion section of science would say this can help solve structural yeah, racism. Structural racism. <laughs> so, Higgs boson is going to solve structural racism. How's it going to do? That? You know, like, we it understood. can be in two places at once, so it can solve yeah, that's it. That's true. That's right. <laughs> the quantum uh, superposition of the Higgs boson. Yeah. If, if, if we had known about it in 1860, there never would have been a civil war. Oh, I see, right, it'll right? go back yeah, and undo- because of uh, st- yeah. racism. So maybe it is a racist boson then. <laughs> racist. It would have prevented the civil war, yeah, what, which is a good, so, necessary war. Oh my God, so each boson could have a spin, like a flavor. <laughs> One like is a left spin. One's right left spin. spin and right spin. It's the left spins are okay. And we mm, want to filter yeah. for those and let the right spins go off into the, the racist nether world. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, man. That's what I mean. That It sounds like we're being silly, but that's what it is. It's like this kind of absurd anti-scientific thinking. It's but, absurd overlap of politics and anti-science. But back to this masking thing. Okay. Yes. Um, look, if you had done a cluster randomized trial in 2020 or 2021, and you had a very modest effect size of masking kids, I would have agree, I would have believed it. Yeah. Uh, whether or not that ought to be policy? Oh, that's another okay. question. Because then you have to consider the trade offs, the, the downsides, language development. Okay. Yeah. But we're talking 2020, 2021. I think there would be a huge premium placed on slowing transmission. Right. Now you start talking later 2020, 2021. Every mm-hmm. adult who wants to can be vaccinated. Mm-hmm. Older people can protect themselves. It's inevitable that all the kids are going to get COVID anyway. You start to see breakthroughs yeah. by, by Provincetown at minimum. And even before that, we had data from Israel, et cetera. Um, then I think the question is, what are you doing it for, yeah. right? So now latter half 2021, 2022, now there's a different question. Even if it slowed spread, what would be the point? Yeah. 90% of kids have had COVID anyway, yep. and we gotta live life. And okay, so that's the second argument, um, uh, but they didn't do the study. right? And they still wanna mask the kids. That's Ontario right. province in Toronto, Crazy. Oh no, the province of Ontario. These be, Canadians. Be careful, man. You'll oh, get God. you get got, a Canadian mob. I got a lot of email with pitchforks, eh? They're like, I was driving in the car with my <laughs> my kids, eh? And you were swearing, eh? And you called it Ontario Province. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blame Canada, blame Canada. A South Park. Dun, 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 dun. Um, yep, South Park. Um, I do blame Canada for many things, like being awesome, being our best fifty first state. Curling, curling. Tim Hortons. Oh yes. But Tim Hortons is good. Poutine. Oh, that's not good yeah. for you. Well, you know. I can't eat a poutine. But you know, have they done a cluster randomized trial on poutine versus not poutine? <laughs> okay, you, you have to be consistent, Vinay, okay? You can't just say it's not good for you. You don't know. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> there. I have a consistent answer for that in the in my paper with uh, Logan Powell on like when are randomized trials necessary or not? Ah. Okay, so here's what my, my argument is. Basically, there's a spectrum of things you can do to somebody. Yes. They range from things that can hurt them a great deal, yes. like a bullet to the head. Right. And things that can help them a lot, like a parachute. Right. Okay. So for huge effect sizes, don't need it. You don't need it. Right. Then for all the whole spectrum of harm, like if I pour, if I poured like uh, I don't know, Drano in your water, I don't have a randomized trial that's good for you. You know, not good right. for you. But the thresholds for like harm is, uh, um, you know, um, <laughs> uh, uh, mostly risk factor epidemiology, um, a low threshold to mitigate a harmful substance. Right. Now we come on the beneficial side of things, things we do to somebody that might have a putative benefit. Mm-hmm. 
uh, if the effect size is huge, you don't need randomization. But if it's a modest to marginal effect size and you think it'll benefit somebody, then you do need randomization. So my claim would be, if you were to say that eating poutine daily will make you live longer, I would say you have a burden of showing a randomized control there trial. You go. Yeah. If you were to say that poutine looks like a bucket of lard. <laughs> <laughs> Mixed with carbs on Mixed the with potato carbs. on the potato and it is fries. Unhealthy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that the the evidence <laughs> standard is going to be low. Um, uh, well, you know, so actually, that's a good segue. This is a good segue. Um, by the way, that 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 piece on misinformation, please, I thought was one of your finest pieces in sensible medicine of many finest piece pieces oh, because no one say. talks about those guys. No one talks. They get about carte it. blanche to be the voice of science, and they're not. No, they're not. They're and, not. And uh, I also mentioned the Mandrola thing. They were so raw. They they took a, you know, a crap on John Mandrola and. Uh, and he was 100% vindicated. He was that, totally right. That paper was published and, yep. and the CDC later changed their estimate to agree with the Mandrill estimate. Let that sink in. <laughs> yeah. He was deplatformed. Like people wanted to shut him off, cut, cut his legs off for even <clears throat> daring to suggest that myocarditis might have a certain frequency. Criticizing his study and all that, that's fine. You can criticize, right? Yeah, but, but they, that was not what they were doing. No, they, they, they like tried to get him fired him. from his hospital. That's right. And it even went further, like Medscape ran an article oh, yeah. and it had like quotes in it, like they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. The irony is the person saying they didn't know what they were doing. Uh, yep. And then they use shitty methods. Actually, the word shitty methods was in it. Like, I'm not swearing. That was in the Medscape. Yeah, it was in the Medscape piece. And Which, by the way, Sensible Medicine is going to bury Medscape eventually. Oh, we're already, I think we're already we're probably- already doing it. Already, already 80% of Medscape. Yeah. We're gonna, they'll all be buried. And they're covered in pharma ads and all kinds of shit. The difference is, why would you read one of these rag publications that tells you nothing with any you know nuance or uh, nothing that, that's not even interesting? Yeah. Or you can read Me Sensible Medicine. This week, Mandrola has a piece on- um, uh, on peer review, mm. uh, Sifu's got a piece coming out about the journalism of long COVID. Mm. I got my piece. Sensible medicine is crushing. It's Dude, much it's more interesting. Like, it's way interesting. Every time one of those shows up in my box, I'm like, hell yeah. You're like sensible. Now, speaking of dumb yes. ideas, oh, yes. that's not sensible medicine. Look what I got, um, everyone. It is a continuous glucose monitor. Oh boy. So you have a uh, type one diabetes? <laughs> Uh, and this is why I wanted to tell you about this because I know you're gonna rip me a new one for doing this. <laughs> um, so I have, I have a good friend, uh, Dr. Ron Sinha, who's been on the show a couple of times and he, what he, his population he works with, he's an internist, works with South Asians and Asians who suffer a lot of insulin resistance and it's kind of <laughs> underdiagnosed and undermanaged. And they have this kind of thing called skinny fat where they have a lot of visceral fat, but they look skinny and they end up having a lot of type two diabetes or, just general insulin resistant phenotypes, like a lot of PCO, polycystic ovaries. And he said, you know, it's kind of interesting because when you give a, a type A person, like a lot of these guys in the Silicon Valley that have this stuff, a way to actually understand what their diet's doing to their sugar, uh, they might actually change what they eat. Now the question is, does it have good outcomes? So what this yeah, yeah, yeah. clinical, <clears throat> this little device does is it's hooked up to an app uh, here and you can see my current mm. interstitial fluid blood glucose is 105, mm -hmm. according to this. Mm -hmm. Now I've cross-checked it with a glucometer and the glucometer is quite a bit lower. So I think there's some, you have to adjust for that. But so what's the advantage and disadvantage of this? Now, I'm doing it kind of for interest. My wife got one too, because she does have insulin resistance, had gestational diabetes, has a family history of type two, even though they're all skinny and they're all Asian. So I wanna I get your input on, how can a device like this be useful and how can it be harmful? Because I can see a little of both already in my own reaction. To okay, it. I'm very interested yeah. in that. I guess what I would say is like, in my opinion, um, I wanna draw one distinction, which is that uh, I believe people should be free to buy whatever the hell they wanna buy with their own money. Sure. Okay, so- And I paid for this out of pocket. If you wanna go see the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe in order, <laughs> <laughs> it's your choice. It's your choice. Right. Or or all the prequels of Star Wars. Yeah. Yes. If, if, if you wanted to buy, you know, if you wanted to buy, you know, a, a, a theater room in your house. Okay. You know, whatever. Or, if you know, okay. You, you should be able to do whatever you want to do with your money. Okay. So if people want to buy this with their own money, it's a fine thing. Okay. So I have no objection to that. Um, you know, if it's an entertainment thing, if it's right. a health entertainment um, Health entertainment. I now like let's it. say we want to use insurance companies to pay for it. Right. Okay. So now I get interested. Now I think you got to have evidence. So in my mind, and I actually, off the top of my head, I don't know all the evidence, but my understanding is that it's vaguely, and tell me if I'm wrong, if you know it better than me, that for people with um, uh, type one diabetes, that if they are assigned a continuous glucose monitor versus like finger sticks, 
Um, there's actually some data that they attain better A1C levels, I right. think. I'm not sure if there's actually data they attain better outcomes. Uh, cardiovascular outcomes. Right. But I think for type 1 diabetes, the concordance between surrogate and heart outcome yeah. is tighter yeah. uh, than type 2. Yeah. Um, and I think so, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So I think that Medicare would pay for it for a type 1 diabetic. That's right. For type 2 diabetic, um, I think that my understanding is Medicare, I, I think Medicare doesn't pay and that it probably, I would imagine that if you randomize a thousand type two diabetics, you probably wouldn't get much A1C del delta difference from it. I don't right. know the, I don't know the right. data, but right. I would, I would guess because to be honest, type ones are probably much more likely to be like on that. You yeah. Know? And they're controlling it directly with insulin and diet, as opposed to the type two, some could use insulin, Yeah, but generally it's medication and diet. Medication diet. Yeah. I also think that if you were really sort of a steward of health resources, you do multiple randomized trials, there's probably some type one diabetics who just like hit their groove like so perfectly yeah. that it's hard to improve upon what they've already done yeah. and that they would not derive additional benefit from That's a CGM. Right. Yeah. And there's probably a bunch that are like more volatile and maybe they'll derive a benefit. That's right. Okay, so yeah. this is like the diabetes market. Yeah. Now let's come to the general market. Yeah. And I think- So people like me. Yeah. Who don't have diabetes. We don't have insulin resistance that we know of. I mean, I'm sure that- My uh, A1C is 5.1. Okay, yeah. um, I guess I would say that I would be like intensely skeptical that if you took, let's say 100,000 people like you and randomize you 50,000, 50,000 to this device or not and followed you for 20 years, I suspect here's what would happen. After two years, the compliance would be so shitty <laughs> that you know, like no one would even be doing it. Right. So the whole trial would be a wash. You'd be bored of it, yeah. Yeah, be bored of it. And um, um, let's say you did a different study where you just took people who were like super motivated to do it um, I still think you'd probably get like massive attrition over the first few years. Right. Um, and, and so like, these are these are just limits. Would you have to do intention to treat analysis yeah, on this? Yeah, you would. Because yeah. I mean, the question is like, should you supply it to people right. not knowing if they're gonna be compliant or not? Right. Um, now, let me even start to think like what my, you know, and then I, I doubt that, let's say I could even imagine perfect compliance. I think in the absence of diabetes, I doubt you'll live longer or, you know, I, I doubt you'd live longer or I'd have fewer cardiovascular complications, right. et cetera. What I'm interested in is whether or not people have the subjective perception of feeling like, let's say we did a different study. A thousand people, 500, 500, we're not measuring long-term outcomes, healthy people, you're given this or not, and we measure short-term satisfaction with your health. Do you feel like you're eating better? I bet you might eke out a benefit there. Right. But then let's make it fun. Three-arm study, okay. Three-arm study, 500, 500, 500. One 500, you get that, like what you got. Yeah. One 500, you get nothing. Yeah. The third 500, you get what you got, but the number it shows on that is a- uh, Is false. It's false. Yeah. It's a random number between yeah. 100 and, you know, like- Yeah. It, it has some day-to-day -day variability. Yeah. But it's more random oh, number. That's a great trial. Then I bet you will be equally satisfied from this both and random number. Both fake treatment group and yes. real treatment yes. group over placebo. Okay, these are my speculations. I think that's not unreasonable. Now, and, and, and I think the reason I'm doing it is I'm curious. Okay, uh, yeah, And course. we're gonna do a show uh, about yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. In high risk people. But like, if you think about, so let's think about my wife. So this is what we've learned already about her is that she has, and her A1C is a little higher. And so she's pre-diabetic. And again, skinny as a rail, um, genetics and Asian. And we're, we're seeing that. So what we've noticed with her uh, sugars, and it's a little competition now. So we'll eat dinner and we'll see what each of our sugars does. Same meal, her sugar will rise much faster, more quickly. And what she same, found- Same portion, same order in which you're putting the food in your mouth? Ah, uh, that's a good question. You, you've, Cause Cause I shovel food into my craw and it's still, <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, <laughs> and my wife is like eating like, like a bird. <laughs> Her sugar goes foop, and mine just barely budges okay. a couple hours later. But and, but uh, you tell me all this, but she's gonna be alive twenty years after it, you. That's exactly <laughs> that's exactly right. She's gonna be alive. It's long exactly after right me. because she has female status, she has Asian status, and I have me status, which is like, you know I'm just a caveman. I'm gonna die of like a I'm massive aneurysm. I'm gonna you right after here. Totally, <laughs> you're gonna go you go fish in a do you do, do a do unnecessary PTCA on me? <laughs> yeah, right um, yeah. And and so I don't know that there's outcome difference. But what is interesting mm -hmm. is she learned that oh you know. The, the the berries we eat every night, like a mix of raspberries, blueberries, and blackberries. Sugar, Maybe you are worth thirty million. <laughs> <laughs> Eating these fucking berries all the time. What the fuck, man? Dude, I know five bucks a pop. <laughs> yeah, pack. Fuck rich you know, this is one thing. I'll say this. I'll say this as as the one rich guy thing. I'll say rich guy. I spend money on nothing except for equipment in here, which is my supporter money, and food. 
And by food, I mean like, I won't even look at the price of the berries like I used to when I was young. I'm just like, I'm buying these fucking berries because it's all that I spend money <laughs> fucking on. Fucking out of season, out, out of season, season blackberries they that flew are like- <laughs> them in from Argentina. <laughs> it's like, like each one is drenched in a gallon of fossil fuel. Yeah, totally. But I got to tell you one thing about Rich and, and thing. I was once reading a paper and it was about like colon cancer. If you had a cancer and it got cut out, like your chance of recurrence, and it looked at like nuts. And it turns out like eating nuts is protective. And, um, and I was like, okay, let me read this. And they're like, well, the first thing they had to teach you is that like, uh, it's not any nut, it's only tree nuts. And so peanuts are a legume, they're not a tree nut. Mm. And tree nuts are Brazil nuts, cashew nuts, almonds, and mm. uh, hazelnuts. Mm. And then it's like, and you can't just eat it all in like one serving. You have to eat two ounces of tree nuts three times a week. And then you have a reduction in colon cancer recurrence and an even bigger reduction in all cause mortality. And I was like, Jesus Christ. What the hell? Yeah. I was like, you think about the kind of person who's this rich motherfucker yeah, who's, who's, who's snacking got, on nuts, <laughs> snacking on tree nuts. Tree and nuts. also like, you know, I have enough money now I can buy tree nuts, but I don't have the wherewithal That's to portion right. it out right. <laughs> and eat a little bit every day. I was like, this is just this a is why nutrition it's studies are, yeah, it's are just, total journalism. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. yeah. So, so back to your so, berries. So in, now You're imagine your a study where you take a bunch of, <laughs> <laughs> you take a bunch of people like say my wife who have some risk factors. Yes. And they learn something about their diet that they didn't know, like these berries shoot her sugar up through the roof, which you wouldn't have thought necessarily because blackberries and stuff are supposed to be low glycemic. And so for her, so now she changed, let's say she changes her diet a little, some other vegetables or something or something different for dessert and, and her sugar is a little more stable. And over but time- she loses the pleasure of the berry. She loses the pleasure of the berry. So oh, area under the curve, does she live longer because she's eating different stuff that's better suited to her? Or does she live shorter because she's less happy, more stressed and less enjoying life? And we don't know the answer unless you did that long-term. Yeah. Which I, is very hard to Very do. hard. And, and yeah. even to think about it, I mean, I'm intensely skeptical. I would say that this is just an, observation I've made, but, um, you know, obviously Asian women have the longest life expectancy Yeah, and, uh, they often have the best blood pressure Yep, and they, off, okay. And they often like, um, uh, you know, have low BMI and, and good blood pressure. Yep. Uh, yet, uh, it, it seems that often someone tells me that they have uh, elevated LDL, Right. But they also have elevated HDL, HDL and their actual cardiovascular risk is in the toilet. Right. And then people are like spending all this mental energy agonizing about HDL. Yeah. And I'm like, you're, you're systolic LDL. blood pressure. You're 90 over yep. 60. You weigh 108 pounds. Yep. You're going to, and, and, and everyone in your family is living to 108. Yeah. What are you talking about? What are you about? doing? What are you, why are you chasing this and, LDL? And Who gives a shit? It's causing stress. And a lot of people. Yeah. Now it's interesting. So Ron's going to come on the show to talk about this. What he finds is this. But pot he's looking at Indian men. I bet. Yes, he is. And okay. and uh, and Indian women too. And okay. what he's found is they're under a ton of stress. Their cortisol levels are high. They're insulin resistant, partially for a variety of reasons, and some of it's genetic and diet and so on. And he's talked a lot about this because the Indian physiology is one that grew up. You know, you, you, you you're basically like doing this thing. You eat like squatting like this, and you're like, okay, buddy. You're eating all <laughs> nothing but rice, <laughs> you know? You're just eating the rice. And uh, even this is like, I'm burning calories, just squatting like this. Now you take that same physiology and you put it in the US in front of a computer cubicle and you make it do engineering and sit through these scrums and all this bullshit. And they're they're eating the same or worse diet. Yeah. And, and then there's they're getting insulin resistant. And, and probably historically in India, like, uh, there are probably many periods of time where you're not eating three square meals a day. Bingo. Okay, so now yeah. you're, you know, you're not- You're hustling you're, for the grub. You're eating like yeah. a boa constrictor in the past. Man, you eat one meal last totally. week. You know? Totally, totally. Yeah, and then also like a lot of Indians are vegetarian. Um, yep. And if you're vegetarian, you move to this country, you're eating the shittiest pizza and stuff. And- uh, Ron talks about that. Like, so, okay. Vegetarian here is overcooked crappy stuff that has no nutritional value. Yeah, it's yeah. not the same. It's not the same. You're sedentary. Yep. Um, and, um, and then the other thing I think is, but you know, you, you call it skinny fat. Mm. Um, but I'm always skeptical of that term. Yeah, tell me. Cause I bet if you made, I don't know this to be true, it's just speculation. Yeah, yeah. You take a hundred people, make them take their shirt off, take a picture of them. Yeah. And you ask the person to score them. Yeah. I bet they'll be able to tell. Ah, uh, Cause it's not really, it's skinny. It's skinny fat, like in the sense that when you're wearing clothes. Yeah, you can't You don't see have it. a big gut. Right, but. But you take your shirt off. Totally. You're gonna know the answer oh, to the question. Interesting. Well, we all just have a fashion show, randomized control trial. It's not a fashion show. It's where a bunch really... of Indian men take their shirts off and go, okay. And then like walking down the thing. I mean. Uh, let's do that. That's actually something I bet we could get funded. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> You're perverse. No. I mean, I guess- That's my, interesting. My, interesting. My point yeah. is that like, even though it's visceral fat, it's very visible because- You can see it. Yeah, you can see you it. Can yeah. See no, it. I, I don't know that you're wrong. Yeah. You can see it and you can see it in people's faces and I think you can see it in people's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why my belief is 
you just can't. I just don't eat meals. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, so we're, we're on this. We're very similar. We don't similar I don't eat breakfast, I, and half the time I don't eat lunch. There you go. And I have dinner. I'm, I don't eat that much because my stomach has no appetite. Yeah. No, no I'm a I'm a one meal a day dinner guy, and I notice my glucose. It's funny on this meter. Glucose. It's just fun to see what it does. It starts out at like you know <clears throat> a certain amount, and over the course of the day, it's a slow burn down until even with exercise and all that. It's just What's the this, lowest it ever got? Um, so by the way, this is just not accurate to the absolute blood glucose, mm -hmm. but the lowest mine got was like 95. But what was I, the highest it ever but got? But when I check it on a glucometer, that was 65. Mm. So the highest it got was 155. And I didn't check with a glucometer. Um, and that was after a meal, after my BOA constrictor meal. So I bet- Two hours after. In, my, in my sham controlled study, if I just set it to give you like spikes to 140, I could, I could probably fool a lot of people. Yeah, you could. The only thing is to really make my sham study be perfect is it should uh, have some sense of when you're eating. Yeah, it needs to detect. Well, you know what? You have to just force people to write a note as to when they're eating because that you can do that in the app. Or like uh, the the Siri is always on. So every time it hears you oh, yes. shovel food in your mouth. It oh, there you go. Do, 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 do. That's scary. Also true. That's why the YouTube algorithm is so brilliant. It's listening to you talk. Um, so what is your person, I guess I'm very curious. So like, let's say he identifies a young person yeah. with this. Uh, or let's say, you know, middle age. It's usually middle aged people. What's the definition of middle age? Oh yeah, yeah you know, let's say 35 and over. We'll make, Damn. It, yeah, we'll make it a young middle age. <laughs> You're middle age I'm at middle this age point, then. yeah. Okay. All right, so then um, what, do you, what, what does he advise them to do? Oh, you know what, I, we'd have to talk to him, but what, it's usually someone who's got a problem already. So they, they're, they're developing high blood pressure. They have an A1C <clears> that's rising. They're uh, having you know, other issues. And so he'll see that population and, or they've had heart disease or someone in their family has had heart disease uh, and they're stressed out. So those are, the, those are the people that he particularly focuses on. Yeah. You know, high what, metabolic what risk. Does he teach them how to eat or what does he teach them? Yeah, so then he does these really cool things. So he'll teach them to journal. He'll teach them to meditate. He'll teach them to eat differently that for the, that type of insulin resistance. He'll teach them, if it's something that makes sense, I think he'll put the glucose monitor on them and give them a sense of control. So it, it is, it's all mental. Mm -hmm. It's all mental. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he seems to have really good outcomes. People lose weight, they feel better and so on. And it, it may be that group, yes. sham versus not sham is the same. Well, I, yeah, I wonder if like you, you in this kind of thing you do like 500 people, he gets half and then the other half, they just go- They just go and get the- Gym Blue membership. Gym membership. Or maybe or, something different, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Why not? No, no, no. Interesting. I don't know. I'm always yeah. trying to think. You'd actually like Ron. It'd I'm be sure fun I would. To do a, it'd be fun to do a VPZD where we kind of talk about this stuff. Yeah. He's a very smart guy. Yeah, it'd be good to do. Um, but yeah, so- and You have to take your shirt off. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. But you know, it's funny. Putting this thing on is a trip. So- Why you did know, you put it in that spot? Well, because that's the best spot, apparently, according to Ron. It's the fatty bit right <clears> under <throat> under here. Because mm -hmm. if you put it intramuscular, it kind of, it can hurt a little, at I least see. initially. But I and, put it in. And so what happens? It pricks you and then leaves a catheter. It's a little thing. It's like a cup and you go, you push it in and you feel a little pinch and then you pull it out and it it sticks around with adhesive, but it's got a tiny little needle in the center. And I tell you, you feel that shit at first. Like it's like someone gave you an intramuscular injection constantly for like the first 10 minutes. I was like starting to panic. I'm like, dude, I'm a pretty tough guy, but I don't think I can do it. And then it, and then it goes It felt away. like when you got your first tat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my tramp stamp yeah. that says, fuck Dr. Oz. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and only he's ever seen it. Only he, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh so, you know, you know. I just realized my my eleven year old edits these now. Oh dear, and she's gonna watch all this bad language. Now, now there's another reason not to curse. Yeah, you're right. Okay, but you know what? Right. Forget it, because I, I curse a lot in front of her, and she doesn't curse at all. Neither, so CGM, neither you're on the CGM bandwagon. Well, no, I'm trying. And do you to do do you do the hot cold plunge? Because that's people like you. Everybody do. does that. People like me do that. I don't do that because you know what? I just meditate. And, did, oh, did you see New England Journal? No, not New England Journal. New York Times had an article about the benefits of cold plunge, and it was like some people are put off by the price tag. The lowest price cold plunge units typically run six thousand dollars or more. <laughs> And then they say, this is what it says in the article. I'm paraphrasing, but this is pretty close to what it says. Some experts think that most of the value of cold plunge can be recapitulated or you know, can be captured by, um, by running the cold shower. <laughs> however, however, unlike tubs, this is wasteful because you waste water. <laughs> Six thousand like, dollars. Yeah, Are you fucking New York Times? I was like, how much fucking water Give you gotta run to break. get a six G bill? Come on, Are you dude. Your mind, you New York. Are you crazy? I'm gonna buy six G tub because you know, so, I want to run water for thirty seconds. So my Idiot. my my buddy um <laughs> my buddy Tom Heineber yeah um 
used to do the cold plunge thing and he wasn't spending no 6,000. He took a trash can like Oscar the fucking grouch, <laughs> filled it with water and d- dumps ice in it and would plunge in that. But I was reading somebody said that like when you do that, it's actually surprisingly expensive how much it costs to buy the ice. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because you have to buy that bags much of ice. It. It's bags and bags and bags. And if you try to produce it yourself, it's not really going to work for you. Did well. I ever tell you the time I went to Helsinki, Finland? Helsinki oh, you told me day? you went to Finland. Why is my dad calling, dude? You want to take it? No, I better not. Uh, well, I'll see. He'll leave a message. He's doing FaceTime, which is weird. Mm. Um, let me just make sure. And now he's calling mobile. Uh, yeah, no, it's good. I'm yeah. not editing this out either. He really, he really <laughs> wants to get a hold of you. Yeah, no, I, I, he'll he'll leave. Wait, wait, he texted. Hold on. Okay. Nope, it's just missed calls. He'll text me. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, because you know, when yeah, dad calls- Yeah, 80-year-old dad. Yeah, 83-year-old 80, yeah. now, you, you want to make sure there's nothing going on. So sorry, so so Helsinki. Yeah, so you, you, keep you, you go in the this. sauna and then they cut a hole in the black in the black sea in the in the ice and you like dive in. Oh, you in. did that? Yeah, but I didn't get all the way my head under. I got up to like this high and before I started, going tears coming down my- Oh my God. I mean, it was the coldest. It, and it was coming out of a hot sauna and going in there. But meanwhile, there were all these like young people, old people just swimming laps in there. Like, they have- uh, and they literally use an auger and cut the ice. Oh my gosh, oh, that was cool. dude! That's see February. I I well, so I met, had a major health change the last couple of weeks because I did this meditation retreat, and it was in North Carolina at a center that was all vegetarian, mm, cool. but it was Ayurvedic. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So like there wasn't like it was a certain so way. So just of doing cheese the, pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> there was no cheese. It I'm was sure. almost vegan. Yeah. And I was like, I'm gonna die. Like I'm not a vegetable person. Like and after, you know, I mean, and this food could have bloated a lead pipe. Like I mean, it was. <laughs> It was great, but it was delicious. So oh, I, wow. instead of eating just one meal a day, I found myself eating two meals a day. And they were big old plates of like almonds and salad and like, you know, vegetarian lasagna and all this stuff. And I was like, dude, I'm going to be so fat because I'm not exercising except for walking up and down to the meditation hall and I'm sitting yeah, basically yeah, yeah. in silence. I lost four pounds okay. and I lost my desire, my voracious appetite for meat. Wow. It was almost like going on a low salt diet and losing your taste for salt. Wow. Like, I mean, I would demand meat at every meal pr- pretty much. And now mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I could take it or leave it. It doesn't matter. I, you know, it's not even an ethical thing. It's just, I just don't care anymore. It's not weird. Yeah. And so weight loss, I was like sublimating fat into the void. I don't know what was going on, but um, I don't know. You just find sometimes life just throws you shit and you're like, you know what? I could eat like this. It's cool. It's good that you take time in life to improve yourself. Gr- ground yourself because I'm 10 years older than you. I have time to do well, this. It's 30 million dollars. That's I'm, I'm, 30 mil- I'm a 30 millionaire. <laughs> what, what did what did Peter Thiel say like about Hulk Hogan? He's yeah, a single he's digit a single millionaire. Digit, he's a single digit millionaire. I mean, this poor guy's a single digit millionaire. Like, how's he getting by? <laughs> Well, first you you say you're not a thirty millionaire, but then it's all blackberries, blueberries, yeah, blackberries raspberries yeah, every right. night. Meditation retreats, <laughs> Meditation at vegan resorts. Yeah, you know, and 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 you know, we were pretty much like any family. Summers <laughs> yeah. in Rangoon, <laughs> we would make meat helmets. <laughs> when I was insolent, my father would beat me with reeds. <laughs> And his mother was named Chloe. Chloe with webbed feet. She yeah. was a French prostitute named Chloe with <laughs> webbed feet. What a great movie. My father was a type of, what was it? The type of person who would say that he invented the question he'd, mark. He'd, he'd say ridiculous things. Like he invented the question mark. <laughs> the, the type of banal malaise that only the insane, you know, <laughs> oh, lament. Yeah, and the, some, What was it? Some I, great line. It was great, dude. That was... I tell Mike you, Myers fell off the face of the earth after this. He did. Although he was recently in a movie, The Pentaverit or Pentaverit. I, I couldn't get through the first 10 minutes of it. It was so bad. Yeah. But I, I, maybe I should give it a shot. Time. So what else is on your list of discussions? Uh, the last thing is Bob Califf tweets. Okay. Tell me about this. Now, I will have to say this. Bob is a friend because I had dinner with him at a thing and I found him to be a lovely human being who's passionate about improving the health of people. That said, take a shit on him. Come on. <laughs> well, he's the, com- he's the commissioner of the FDA. Yeah, so now he's a fair target of, of criticism that's and constructive. He was doing okay. I mean, I didn't have any, I mean, he screwed up more the last time he was commissioner when he approved Exondis, uh, the Duchenne's muscular dystrophy drug. Um, but this time he's the commissioner of the FDA and he has this tweet. Let me see if I can pull it up. It was a crazy tweet. It said, and this is where we're all checking our phones on a okay. <laughs> preliminary epidemiological findings point to this, this preliminary epidemiological findings point to the distinct possibility of the bivalent vaccines and antivirals reducing the risk of long COVID. Uh, Ooh, and uh, you just 
<sighs> you just can't say that mm, at the when FDA. you're the, at the FDA. Yeah. yeah. So that was what really got me. That's not uh, got me. But you know, again, like he got crushed. A yeah. Lot of I mean, the, every official in this administration is like that. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. It's not good. I mean, you can't. I mean, and, and let's articulate the problem with what he said is that. When you're at the FDA, there is a very strict standard for what you can say a product does. Right. And it should only be what the product has been proven to do right. in registration not clinical trials. Not a distinct possibility. Of- and not possibility, right. no. And they actually have the legal authority to fine companies for false advertising. Right. That's something they often do. And here he is saying, I mean, what, the bivalent vaccine is just demonstrably false. There's no data on earth. There's not even preliminary data on vaccine effectiveness, right? Let alone data How on long can you COVID. Talk about long COVID, it's which we all, hardly understand, right? Well, yeah, <laughs> right, hardly understand. Yeah. It's interesting how it works that long COVID. Yeah, because you can get COVID. You don't even know you had COVID, but then you get the long COVID. And you know what? That's another. Seems like long COVID is another badge. Uh, hashtag long COVID. Oh, that's part of the Venn diagram. The, the Venn diagram of uh, COVID hit really hard the black and Hispanic communities, uh, uh, underprivileged communities. Long COVID goes straight to the suburbs. You know, it goes straight to the middle-aged goes, white woman. Goes to the golf clubs, right. <laughs> the yoga studios, the suburbs. A bit odd. Well, you know, I would, uh, yeah, I'm not even going to touch that because that's a... But bivalent vaccines <laughs> have no evidence that they prevent long COVID. Right. And that to me is, that to me is the egregious act of, of what he's saying. Got it. Got it. Speaking of long COVID, we can talk about this... Uh, Professor, what's his name? The Wash U St. Louis. Mm. They're like publishing all these papers on long COVID. And they're like, you know, they're like, we looked at people who had mild long COVID. We looked at veterans who had a COVID diagnosis in the VA data set. Mm. And I was like, if you think a veteran who had to schlep to the hospital to get a COVID diagnosis had a mild case yeah, of COVID. No, you're no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, that's a sick vet. Yeah. Because <laughs> that vet ain't coming in unless he's really sick. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So there's all kinds of bias. Well, you know, so speaking, so Ashish Jha yeah. recently quoted in The Guardian <laughs> said, uh, yeah, you know, <clears throat> uh, I think this thing's pretty much, you know, if you've been vaccinated, you got immunity, all that. Like, just, yeah, just let's just party like it's 2019. He said that? He yeah. said, let it rip? He literally said, let it rip. Like I mean, not in that guy. way, but know, he was yeah. basically saying, hey, it's, this, is, this is okay if you've, if you've done the things. Yeah, if you've done all- Meaning you've been alive. Yeah, right. You've you already lived. gotten COVID. <laughs> you know, they, they talk one side, they're like, oh, COVID's no big deal. You walk it off. And the other side is like, it's a national it's emergency. A national we, emergency. Need, we need EUA authority. Right, you know? right. You can't have it's it really, ways. yeah. And, and you're, you know, your joke about long COVID is actually, it really hits a nerve because mm, yes, it is it's kind not, of it's like, inaccurate. there is a kind of a, mm. it's so biopsychosocial to begin mm, with. Mm-hmm. And then- it is. It's like, what are these demographics? Well, like, where's the long COVID in sub-Saharan Africa? Right. Where's the long, where's COVID, the long COVID in, in, in the in inner, slums? inner city uh, United States? In Mumbai slum. In Mumbai slum. Find like, me a long COVID. There should COVID. be long COVID everywhere yeah, because they were be. all infected. Early on, the seroprevalence was through the roof. Dude, they're, 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 they're still like the happiest people on earth, even though they're super poor. Because yeah. they have community, they have connection, they have. Well, isn't there something about wealth and happiness that it's very, it, it plateaus very quickly once plateaus you have enough quickly. for your material needs? Yeah, seventy five thousand was the old study, is mm. what they studied. Now it's thirty million. Now it's thirty million. <laughs> <laughs> now it's until you're popping. I'm not even happy. popping a blueberry every day yeah. with your CGM. You know what? I take that. I'm going to take that personally, <laughs> and I'm going to take it angrily. <laughs> and that little bit of anger is going to release cortisol uh-huh. and epinephrine, which and is going to raise my blood pressure. Raise your skinny fat. And I'm going to be skinny fat. <laughs> and then I'm going to have a stroke. And then you know, I am going to get elected over Dr. Oz. Oh, yeah. Then you know, you're going to run a against, causal chain of you're events. You're going to run against okay, Oz. This is obviously. just science. Okay. It's not even just science. It's the science. Yeah. It's the hashtag, the, hashtag science. the science. Well, that's, that's what I call that Venn diagram. Oh, the science? Yeah. Oh, I love it. And you know what? Actually, the only thing in that Venn diagram that really made him makes it unforgivable for me, it's not the first two layers. It's that third layer, which that they're just not happy with their own speech. Mm. They want to cut other people's yeah, speeches. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they were just like, we're just the same, yeah. wrong, yeah. but you talk, I talk, yeah. and we let it hash it out. Yeah. That's not where they stop. They have to, their, their whole platform is predicated on, it's not enough for me to make my show and say what I think. You can't make your show and say what you think. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's crazy. It's nuts. And you know, especially when you're wrong. When you're wrong. I mean, now, now, okay, this is a good segue into something we were talking about before the show, because we usually do a little psychotherapy on each other uh, right before we start. And, 
you have you were you walked in complaining that you've been irritable and a little reactive <laughs> and i was like oh tell me more because you know i've just come back from this meditation thing where i'm yeah, watching my yeah. mind be irritable and reactive enough about me enough yeah, about, yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, okay, and, okay. and i thought you know we, we we hashed it out and we felt you know what it is yeah what's it's, the root reason the root reason is when we and feel, i haven't been detectably irritable i no, just felt on the inside it's in, internal and i knew i could complain to you you can complain to me because yeah, i'm because you're I'm, one of the few people who, and i also am irritable and reactive <laughs> and i will complain to you equally yeah, yeah, so yeah. It, it was that when we feel like we're not seen for authentically who we are by somebody who ought to know better um it's very frustrating and it creates a kind of a, a tension and it's really about us it's really about our own trying to desire to be authentic in the world and true to what we think we are. And when it isn't seen, it creates a kind of tension. And there's a consistency with you too. It's like the way you approach your professional life, like the inconsistency of the scientific population can also go into meetings and can go into other things, but you'll yeah, never show it. Well, it's all I try to I try to bury it. Yeah, I was just on a meeting where somebody was like, uh, you know, they talk about how they submitted a lot of complaints. I was like, well, I thought a lot of complaints, but I didn't submit any complaints because I knew that's not gonna yield any result. Right. But I think what you're getting at is this, which is that, and this is my maybe my pet peeve, which is that um, lately I have been in many conversations where I feel like the person talking to me asked me questions in such a manner that I'm like, you really like, like, I, I mean, I'm totally cool. You like, you don't know anything about me. That's fine. But that's not how the conversation starts. Yeah. It starts with, I'm a big fan of your whatever. Yeah. I see all your stuff. I see all your right? stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's how it starts. Yeah. But then it's quickly followed with. Would you do, what do you think about? And I'm like, you know what I would think about. Yeah. Like, if, I mean, what, you, what kind of question is this? Or or talking to me about something that I'm just so not interested in. And uh, So they're not seeing you. They're well, not seeing I mean, who you are. And I guess yeah. part of my objection is, well, then why did you strike up this conversation? Right. What is the, per what right. is the right. purpose? Right. I guess that's- what, Because you know, it's not like they're coming to you as a stranger no. in that way. They're coming to you saying, I know you, I love your stuff. I'm a fan of this. And this is the asymmetry of being known a little bit. Like I find this a lot. People yeah. know me really well. They think they do, but I don't know who the hell they are. But the relationship assumption on their end is that I know who you are. And I'll, it becomes painful for I'll me. I'll give a fake example, which is like, they come up to me and they're like, bad. they're like, oh, you know, I love your, I love your stuff on plenary session. Hey, what do you think about Cell and XR? I'm like, dude, I have 20 shows taking a shit on yeah. Cell and XR, yeah. you know? So like, of course. This like, happens to me all the time. You know, but <laughs> it's not, that's not what exactly what happened, but it's similar. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know, I guess maybe part of it is it's stupid to be irritated by. I guess that's one thing to say. We should at least acknowledge yeah, that, that maybe you shouldn't that be irritated it's by. It's us. It. And I said, I told that to you when, when you walked in, I was like, listen, yes, this he, is always about us. He said, it's you. Yeah, it's you, always He said, you are the problem. Yeah, you're the problem. I started blaming you. I'm like, you're the problem. You are the problem. But what I meant is that it's always when we're reactive, yes, it's, it's always it, us. I mean, yeah. you control your own emotions. Exactly. But I guess, I don't know, what is it? The, the root of what bothers me about it is, um, you know, time is precious. Yeah. And I don't want to spend my time having conversations that don't go anywhere or don't matter. For instance, you know, that to me, that's what a Zoom meeting is. Right. I was recently invited to a Zoom meeting. They budgeted like 45 minutes. And as soon as it starts, they're like, oh, should we all introduce ourselves? Should, sure. Do the introduction. Just get the puzzle. And I was like, if you don't mind, can I go first? I said, I've been thinking about this issue. And here's my proposed resolution. And here's why it will make everyone happy. And I quickly offer that within the first 90 seconds, within the first four minutes, that there's hemming and hawing. The people debate alternatives to my solution. Then they quickly come to the conclusion that my solution is the solution. <laughs> it is the only solution that, keep, that maximizes everyone's happiness. And then they all agree to my solution. The meeting ends 30 minutes early. That is how that's, life should be. That's how life should be. But when I'm in so many meetings, it's like 45 minutes. Let's brainstorm. Let's hear what people think. I'm like, oh my God. And you know what? You can tolerate that in your 20s and your <clears throat> early 30s before you're wise enough to know that time is limited. It's limited. And it's your most precious thing. And With you your want skinny it, fat, there's not much time dude, left. The clock is ticking, <laughs> yeah, dude. It gets to 155. <laughs> Let's see what it is right now talking about skinny fat. Now I'm just curious because we, we just got to know because I'm dying. It's 102. Okay. Good. So, you know, we're Phew. good. Okay. okay. Oh, let me see. My dad texted me. Oh, oh my gosh. Pick up milk on your way home. This is great. I got to read this. <laughs> I went to Costco site on my desktop and it says your computer is infected with malware. Call Apple support and it gives the number. Uh, it's a bogus number. It's a scam. But how do I get off that page? It won't let me do anything on Costco. <laughs> <laughs> Poor dad. My dad. You know, and that's a legitimate question. Okay, I just I'm gonna tell him right now. Yeah. Hold on, we'll call. Close your browser. later. Close browser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Poor, poor my poor dad. And, 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 and you know, he's actually he 
has been close to being scammed by stuff like this that of looks course. really legit. And you know, the elderly get scammed. It's harder for elderly. It's very hard. And it's just heartbreaking to see when it happens because it's some fucker on a call center somewhere doing this and they know what they're doing. And it's just, you're like, wow, dude. Um, to me, the heartbreaking thing is like, whenever you see somebody use a computer and you know that they're not really fast out with computers, you see this. <laughs> <laughs> that's don't dude you, don't you <laughs> looking at the mouse looking at the screen looking at the mouse looking at it almost like i can't believe these are correlated and, and like it's going up there, and going up double going up and then and then when they type they take the, you, you take the and, and then of course make sure that you have the reading glasses and then yes <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, like a young person, uh, yeah, the, the, the little thumbs are going yeah, crazy, and they're talking to you the whole time. And then they yeah. also do, uh, oh yeah, take a little, uh, take a little selfie. I see uh, it all the time on the airplane. Oh, oh yeah, that kind of secret selfie on the airplane. They don't want like their seatmate to know. It's always like, like in the hood, like dark. And yeah, like, right. They're right. all dark, and then they're like beam out the side of the. And, and and then the caption is like living the travel dream, and then back to the real world where they're just like scrunched in the middle seat <laughs> some <laughs> shitty like united airlines economy oh, oh god that's the worst <laughs> the d-class like economy i know look us 30 millionaires we don't fly like that oh either. i do you know i fly in the track i fly in that and then they're always like uh if you're in boarding group nine or above <laughs> make sure you check your bag because there'll be no space be by no the space. time you get it and then they're like and if you're in 10 and above make sure you go to the restroom before you get on the plane because you're not allowed you know <laughs> <laughs> United is miserable. Yeah. The only one that's even palatable to me is uh, Alaska. You know, I'm flying Alaska this uh, this week, going to Florida to do a talk. Yeah, it'll hmm. be fun. Yeah, SFO direct. SFO direct. It's a five and a half hour flight there and a six hour flight back. Brutal. But you know, whatever. You know what's great? I've changed. So after this meditation retreat, I changed my whole opinion on yes. speaking. Yes, good. So before I left, I was like, you know what? This is inauthentic. You know what it is? It's a not being seen for who you are. I know. Like, you I'm not your know. fucking clown. I'm not here to do rap songs. You're a jester. I'm, I'm, I'm not your jester. I'm not going to talk about Entertain me, Z. Entertain <laughs> me. <laughs> I don't care how much you're paying me because I'm charging a ton of money because I don't want to do it. I don't like to travel. I don't like to leave my family. And 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 I have I've nothing to prove to anyone. This is my attitude before I go on this retreat. I come back and I'm like, what a gift that people want me to come and share whatever little insight that I've gained to be with a group of people in a synchronized way and do whatever. And so now I'm like, okay, as long as I get to be me, I'll go and do it. And uh, even if I even if I have to do some things that I <clears throat> thought were inauthentic, like perform a music video that I did five years ago, if I can do it from a place of authenticity and have fun and see the audience light up, then why wouldn't I do that? So it, it was it was nice to realize that I was wrong about that. Well, but, yeah. but you, you're saving, like you're sparing the talk. I always find the talk part enjoyable. It's just all the other parts are not enjoyable. <laughs> right. I mean, travel the, the is travel, still it's terrible. The client calls. The hotel the, room. The hotel room. The sleepless night because you're in a strange bed and you're also like, Creaking oh my God, sounds. this audience is going to hate me. The, you, the three objectives, the CME, <laughs> the this, the that. All of it. So all of it. And But now I'm just like, like for this one, like- I'm just so excited. Good. I'm good. super well, fired I won't up. Bu I won't bum you out then. <laughs> no, no, good, no. Good. I know I know all the negative stuff, but you know, the cool thing is, and this is the other thing is after that retreat, I'm flying back on a six hour flight from North Carolina coming home and I'm just in a blissful state of presence. And I'm like, that's always available. Like it, we just choose not to see it. We choose to lose ourselves in thought and rumination when you could just be here with the woman sitting next to you who like happens to like, run a company that you've never knew even existed doing stuff that you didn't even know was a thing. You struck up a conversation with a she, she, so she could tell it was weird. It's an energetic thing. Usually when I get on a flight, people I'm are like, like this. Yeah, and people are like, like, don't talk to this guy. They can tell. They're like, this guy, he's got his ear pods in, which I know you love. And I'm Looking just- fashionable. I'm in a different dimension. I'm not making eye contact, <laughs> sit in. And then this woman, she comes on and she's late. She's huffing and puffing and she's overweight. And I could tell, I was like, 
oh, this poor woman. And you just see me, I'm like all like glowing love. And she comes in and just tells me her life story. And wow. <laughs> it was crazy. I knew you probably were. And I was interested. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is fascinating. Even though I was exhausted. <laughs> so it's all, you know, it's all us, dude. Yeah, I know. It's always like, the only thing you can control in the world is your reaction to things. Yeah. And that's a cliche until it's not. And it's a cliche, but like a lot of cliches, a lot of truth in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a but, deep truth that you can't feel unless you're in the space. Yeah. But, uh, so yes, you can control how you feel about it. And so I will, not, so I try not to feel bad, but I can also control my actions in the future. And yes, so I will to con- avoid. I will avoid. Yeah. I will avoid any and all activities that I feel like I that I don't know where it's going or I don't know what the purpose of this yeah. meeting is and I don't and it's going on too long. Yeah. And to be honest, Smart. I think a lot of people at work for me it's not about hours work. I'll work 20 hours a day, you know, that's, I mean, I'm happy to work like a dog. You're you know? the hardest working person I know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the hardest working person in show, but no, in, 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 in the news business. Yeah. In porn. You yeah. know? <laughs> They're always booking me. They're always booking me. I'm like, I'm tired. Man. Even the fluffers are tired. Even the fluffers are tired. <laughs> like, I'm like, it's not the water I wanted. <laughs> okay. There, okay. But, but, you know, working hard is different than wasting your time. Yeah. And that's that's oh. what Zoom is. But, but Zoom you know, is, Zoom is the confusing working hard with wasting your time. But you know, yeah, you're right. And th- there there may be a difference between you and I in terms of just frame shift a decade. So when I was you, I was taking all the meetings, putting up with that stuff, and seething inside. I see. And now I just say, you know, I'm very authentic when people ask me for these things, and I say, you know, actually, I just don't have a lot of time anymore, and I like to spend it doing these things. So if there's something you could do by email, that'd be great. And then, rather than getting on a and call. then people were like, like, oh, well, what did you do today? I was like, well, I tried to s- stack gummy bears to see. How- <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I spent four hours meditating. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, how busy are you, you 30 millionaire? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, and you wouldn't believe how high my blood sugar went oh when, my I ate those, when I ate those berries. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, my skinny fat is just raging right now. And, and then Vinay's like, actually, you know, I think you're actually just fat, fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about this. Hey, we're going to have lunch, man. Yeah, let's do it. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah that's the. That's... I, I look forward to these things, man. You're my social. You're my social relief. <laughs> your escape. Like, it's it's funny, and I it, these conversations are just like fun conversations. Yeah. Did we accomplish anything? Oh, I feel yeah. like we hit our. We talk a lot of things. We hit all the points. CGM. Blah, blah, blah. What did we miss? Nothing. Nothing. That masking. Uh, New England Journal. I mean, the other thing I wanted to say about New England Journal was that, um, you know, I I don't I just don't think that this is the sort of thing they would have published. 10 years ago. So I do think their editorial standards yeah, are shifting. It's shifting, yeah. And I, yeah. I, I, and I guess I, I am, I'm much more worried about the institutions, all mm-hmm. the institutions mm-hmm. from prof- universities to journals. Can I am about the, the, whatever, the similar goals of the world. So yeah, right, right. I'm, I, I'm actually going to make a, uh, a statement that I made on a live show I did recently after I got back from this retreat. And it may be the glow of the retreat, but I think it took a few days, but I, I think there's something shifting in everything. Like in the mm. world, you can, I can feel it. Like there's a positive shift happening. People are looking at social media going, not a good idea. Like the, the whole thing with Twitter and Elon, it's more people going, could this be the end of this torture chamber? Like, Some is there a better way relieved. to leave? Well, yeah. they moved to Mastodon. Mastodon, which, what the hell is that? <laughs> and it's they're the like, same thing. Now it's just gonna be all liberal. <laughs> They're Even like, more all liberal. They're like, oh, I just tossed out a toot on Mastodon. You know, they call it toots. That's, <laughs> toots. that's what they call it. <laughs> and to me, like the, the proof that Mastodon it, it must be shit is that if it was really a good website, why would you have to tell everyone on Twitter where you're going? Yeah, where you're going. And, then, and all the updates are like, here's a thread on how you can start your own Mastodon accounts. Like, number one, decide what server you want to use. I was like, you've already lost a lot <laughs> you of- lost Decide everyone. what server what you- server? What are Come you talking on. about? Come on. Well, you know what? You'll never find me on Mastodon. Yeah, nope. If that's on Mastodon, it's not me. It's an impersonator. It's a, it, and they're tooting about, <laughs> <laughs> about how they're benign. I'd rather go to TikTok. Yeah, that's true. As right. much as I hate TikTok, I'd I'm do not, that. I'm not there yet, but. I mean, I want to do micro meditations on TikTok. What about, I mean, the big claim is that the Chinese Nationalist Party has all your data. Right, right, right. But you're just not they worried about They can have that. it, dude. Actually, that's not true. I actually deleted most of my TikTok stuff. I mean, it's there, but I don't look at it ever. And I but you deleted the my... app off your phone? Uh, yeah, I did. Okay. It's not on my phone. Because these apps like suck up I, all your data. Yeah, I go. I, I use it on the website if I use it and I hardly post to it. In fact, I never post to it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think there's a shift though. Like, I feel like something's going on in the world that people are starting to wake up a little bit to what they, we've been in through a little bit of a nightmare and it's start, we're coming out the other end. That's what I think. I could be wrong. Now we could have nuclear war tomorrow. That's fine. Could we'll happen. That. And that's just, you know, again, it the was un- close universe while, won't but... even know. You know, one, I'll say only one thing about the retreat that I did that, that was kind of funny is, you know, I was sitting on the floor in the dining room, like just sitting there, just being quiet, like everybody was. I'd just eaten. There's a little chair that you can sit on the floor. And 
I started having all these doubts, like entering the mind, a little reactivity, like, why am I here doing this, yeah. eating these vegetables and yeah. being bloated all yeah. day and yeah. <laughs> climbing up and down the hill, sitting in silence. This was like day four out of five, you know? And this happens, doubt visits you strongly. And uh, and I was like, guys, this, this, this is trash. Like, I'm a stupid person. Like, I left my family to do this. Like, I don't need this. And then suddenly it just occurred to me, like, so who's having that thought? Like, what is that? And I was like, oh, that's a thought. So who's having it? So I start looking for who's the thinker. And then the next thing that happens is I realize deeply just knowing, oh, like there's no person here. Like this is all just happening perfectly. It's unfolding perfectly. The universe knows exactly what to do. And it was so funny. I started laughing out loud. And a strange thing happened. Someone else who was at the retreat was laughing in the corner there after I laughed. And I'm like, oh, laughter is infectious. That's all it is, you know? And no one's talked. So maybe they picked up on my laughter. So I asked her later, I was yeah, like, well, yeah, what yeah. were you laughing at? She's like, she yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. I had all this doubt. And uh, and then I was looking for who was doubting. And then I realized, oh, everything is perfect. And I just had to laugh. I'm like, you had the same epiphany. So I don't know. I think we're connected in a way that is a little transrational sometimes, or it's just incredible coincidence uh, that you put well, people in the same that's causes good, and conditions and it's a good feeling. they have similar outcomes, but the feeling is wonderful and everything is perfect. And uh, you can make it more perfect by just being authentic to what it is, right? And uh, that means maybe you go and fight for what you care about as tooth and nail, like like you do. I you try know? to. Yeah, you, you do it, dude. Like, I'm so impressed with you. One tooth at a time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and that, my friends, yeah. is that why it. the VPZD show is so, the best show on television. It's the best, television. It's the best medical news show. Yeah, the best medical news we show. We did do some news. We talked about, we you know, no, the FDA news. statutory authority, yep. uh, uh, difference in difference analysis. They know that time varying covariates actually thwart it. Yep. Uh, so they learned something. CGM, they learned uh, many randomized trial designs were proposed. Oh, yeah. That was a good um, thought experiment. Uh, Sensible Medicine, the best website. The, the best website. Best website. Yeah. crush all the competition yeah. of which there is none because nobody does what, what and your doing. net worth is something between zero and 30 million zero and 30 million yeah. but enough to have a berry habit <laughs> <laughs> but but not enough to fly first class united and that's an interesting window it's an interesting it's window it's an interesting window you know as a mm -hmm. single digit millionaire uh <laughs> <laughs> you're not doing well in this town. Not in this town. Not in this town. <laughs> in this town, you're living in a tent city off out in Redwood City yeah, somewhere. Yeah, we didn't talk about that, but recently somebody was telling me about the kind of salaries they get at Google and Facebook and Lyft and all this, and uh, my jaw was on the floor. Dude, as a doctor, right? I mean, oh, yeah. it's way more than what I've ever made, and they were making it when they were in their 20s. It's crazy. it's crazy. And then they complain they don't have free fucking food. <laughs> yeah, free food. Like, come on, dude. I was like, you should see what, I mean, God, the food we get, like a hospital cafeteria. Oh my it's gosh. Terrible. It's And it's the least healthy food you can Correct. Find. Correct. And they're serving Your it CGM hospital. would break. Dude, it would break. It would just melt. It would be like the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark where all the Nazis' faces melt off. <laughs> like I'd look at the glucose and my face would melt off. <laughs> Let's see the final glucose reading of the day. 101. 101. Nailed it. It's been totally stable. Yeah. And- and again, these are probably 20 points above what my glucometer reads. All right, let's, now let's state. go eat and see how high we can get it. Totally. Yeah. And then I'll put it in the show notes. Yes, that's okay. great. Okay, so everyone, uh, this is the end of the show. You know what to do. Subscribe, leave a review on VPZD Show. Mm -hmm. Check out Vinay at where? Vinay Prasad Observations and Thoughts Substack and uh, Sensible Medicine Substack and YouTube. And me at zdogmd.com forward slash supporters, join our supporter tribe. And uh, we may switch our podcast hosting platform. And we, at some point, we may throw some ads on there just to pay for the bills here because we don't charge money for VPCD. Correct. But for now it's free and easy for everyone. And afterwards I will post what my glucose did uh, after our meal, which is going to be something- Only Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> because if you don't eat the whole box, you're fat phobic. You know what? Lena, <laughs> Lena Wen said it best. Uh, you know. Oh, we didn't even talk about that. You know, she um, couldn't actually do that thing. She, the, she, the, the, the Public Health, uh, American Association of Public Health she, Conference? Yeah. Why? They, there was a, a, a legitimate uh, threat that they were going to abduct her in the restroom or like do something bad oh, to her. My. She had like physical violence threats. God. So this is when idiocy spills over. It's just like what happened on January 6th. That yes. was a virtual bubble. And actually like Lena is stuck between, I mean, obviously all the stuff she said about what they should do to the unvaccinated, I disagree with. Okay. So like, right. I'm, yeah. you know, I never- We've talked I, about Yeah, that. we talked about that. Yeah. But like she has a huge group of people on one side that hate her for being uh, pro-vax 
And she has a huge group of people on the other side that hate her for not wanting to mask a two-year-old for 22 more years. You know, I don't know. So she's got like, she's getting from both ends, Dude. but she had to cancel because of like real death threats. That's, um, that's when this madness on that's social media. Far. That's why I think the death of social media is coming. I don't know what will replace it, but it'll be something like what we're trying to do with Substack and yeah, so on. Good. Accessible Mess and a subscription well, community. Then I'll cheer its death. Yeah, exactly. I'm cheering it too. I mean, I just took a shit on, you know, Facebook had the gall to like, I, I'm not even gonna well, okay, I'm okay. Not even, I'll, I'll talk yeah. about it lunch. A, I'll talk about it right. lunch. Yeah. So okay, that all being said, I love you guys and we're out. We're out. Peace.